Good afternoon. I'm David Hollander and I am the Chief R&D Officer at ARI Pharmaceuticals. Thank you to OIS for inviting ARI to participate in this European showcase. It is my pleasure to present to you ARI's approach to the European market as well as product development. ARI is known for developing Ropressa and Roclitan, two products for treating glaucoma with the novel MOA of ROC inhibition. In addition to the relatively recent U.S. launches, ARI has also received European approval for both products known in Europe as Rokinza and Rocklanda, and has initiated phase three studies in Japan in collaboration with Santin as part of ARI's globalization. At the same time, we've also been able to advance our pipeline. Our phase 2B dry eye program is now fully enrolled and our sustained release intravitreal implants continue to move forward. Phase 3 discussions are underway with both EMA and FDA for our dexamethasone implant. Our combination ROC and protein kinase C inhibitor is in dose escalation in the clinic and preclinical IND enabling studies are underway for our PAN-VEGF inhibitor. It was earlier this year that ARI gained approval in Europe for Rocklanda, our ROC inhibitor fixed dose combination product with the PGA. Europe remains an important marketplace for glaucoma. For reference, 98 million bottles of IOP lowering medications were sold in 2020 in the big five countries alone, a number which far exceeds the number of bottles in the US market. We believe that our new plant in Ireland will be even further utilized to produce bottles for this large European market. Reimbursement and pricing considerations are key to any launch in Europe. As part of our approach, we have conducted a head-to-head -head study known as Mercury 3 against Ganfort, a leading combination product in Europe with a PGA and a beta blocker. In this six-month study conducted in 11 European countries, Rockland achieved approximately 9.5 millimeters of IOP lowering and demonstrated non-inferiority across all nine time points. These results have facilitated pricing discussions and have also generated significant interest from potential collaborators for this European glaucoma opportunity. Now, turning to our pipeline and our dry eye program, the dry eye market in Europe is far less mature than that of the US. While a topical cyclosporin is approved in Europe for those with severe keratitis, artificial tears remain the predominant treatment option. Approval for this product in Europe was based on signs and inflammatory markers without any significant benefit reported for symptoms. Similarly, most of the topical anti-inflammatory products in the US for chronic dry eye are approved based on signs alone, despite dry eye being largely a symptomatic disease. When evaluating steps for delivering a dry eye product to Europe, it is also important to consider generating head-to-head -head comparisons to approved agents, long-term efficacy, as well as quality of life data. AR15512 is a highly selective and potent tripamate agonist that ARI is developing to address both the symptoms and signs of dry eye. The tripamate receptor offers a new target for treating dry eye. These receptors are specialized cold thermoreceptors located on the eyelid and cornea. They are highly sensitive to reductions in temperature associated with tear evaporation and have been shown to modulate basal tear secretion as well as blinking. 512 is more potent than other cooling agents and also far less likely to cross-react. As a tripamate agonist, 512 provides a cooling sensation when applied to the ocular surface intended to relieve ocular discomfort. A phase 1-2 study was conducted in mild to moderate dry eye patients. As shown on the left, a continued improvement in symptoms was observed at each visit over four weeks in those dosed twice daily. Statistical significance was achieved in patients with more severe symptoms. Similarly, a continued improvement in tear production was also observed which achieved significance at week four. The formulation was well tolerated and the vast majority of AEs were mild. A three month phase 2B study, powered as a phase three known as COMET-1, is underway evaluating the safety and efficacy of two concentrations dosed twice daily. The primary endpoints are ocular discomfort and tear production. The study incorporates environmental as well as controlled adverse environment endpoints in order to have a full array of secondary endpoints to review with regulatory agencies in Europe, the US, and other regions to finalize the next phase of development. For the posterior segment, much of our retina pipeline is based on ARI's drug delivery platform technology and our proprietary bioerodible formulations, which we produce through our print manufacturing. We are able to utilize a diverse set of drug targets, 
including small molecules, with a variety of polymers to customize sustained release implants. The goals are simple, long duration of effect, fewer injections for patients, and less burden on the healthcare system. Concepts which are appreciated across regions, but especially in Europe. Our lead retina candidate known as 1105 is a sustained release bioerodible dexamethasone implant produced via our print technology. It is approximately half the dose of Osrodex, but through our delivery platform has been designed to provide longer duration. A phase two trial in patients with chronic macular edema secondary to RVO evaluated two formulations with different release kinetics. Both formulations were well tolerated with acceptable safety profiles. Our CF2 formulation was selected for phase three based on its longer duration of six month efficacy. This six month duration of effect we believe will allow this product to be viewed favorably by physicians, patients, and healthcare systems. Intravitreal steroids have been used far more commonly in Europe where the market is roughly three times that of the US. Phase three studies with head-to-head -head comparisons to currently approved products will be key to European approval and reimbursement. As we look to commence our phase three retina programs, we're also excited that ARI's print platform may allow low cost production and some degree of pricing flexibility in the long term. In addition to the intravitreal steroid market, we are also looking at the anti-VEGF market, which continues to grow worldwide. AR14034 is a sustained release implant of Exidnib, a pan-VEGF inhibitor intended to achieve efficacy for up to one year. We believe that Exidnib is the ideal small molecule based on its potency and selectivity. The predictability of our own preclinical models we saw with 1105 is this confidence that we have the potential to achieve a 12-month duration. Preclinical studies are ongoing with expected IND filing in the second half of next year. Another unmet need we have identified is a potent and relatively safe topical steroid, especially from an IOP standpoint. ARI is developing a new class of topical ocular steroids linked to ROC inhibitors intended to leverage the antifibrotic and IOP lowering effects of ROC inhibition. Our lead preclinical candidate has already demonstrated excellent potency in inflammatory models, and we believe that this new class will have the potential to mitigate IOP-related AEs. We at ARI are very excited by our diverse pipeline that will fill important needs in Europe, the US, and other regions. This includes our later stage dry eye program, which will report top line in Q3 of this year, our dexamethasone implant, in which we are finalizing our phase three program, as well as our earlier stage programs, including our sustained release pan VEGF inhibitor and our ROC inhibitor linked steroid. We look forward to our continued work with the physician community, as well as regulatory and reimbursement agencies, as we generate the necessary long term, comparative, and real world data in order to deliver differentiated products that meet the unmet needs of patients and physicians worldwide. Thank you.